The Pulse School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF. Hey, Carrie Strauss here with realagriculture.com. I am back here today with another Pulse School episode, and I have here with me Jack Payne with South Country Co-op. How's it going today? Really good, Kara. That's great. So we are at the time of the year, uh, lots of pulses have been planted and uh, now the next consideration for many is rolling them because I mean we're going to combine and and you're getting so so close to the ground so rolling is something you yep. really consider. However, there's a lot of places that are still facing a lot of drought. Yeah. What do you do in a drought situation when it comes to rolling? Okay. so. I, I guess if we were optimum conditions, you know, the recommendation is to roll your peas shortly after seeding. You know, within a few days after you've seeded the peas, roll them, you know, get the get rid of, push those rocks down, break up some of those lumps, whatever, so that you've got a good uh, seed bed and right for harvest conditions. Now, the situation we run into in Southern Alberta, of course, are the dry conditions, the drought conditions. And so, some growers may opt to roll later because if you roll right after you've seeded, uh, you do uh, create some conditions where you might get some wind erosion. Because uh, as you roll, you are breaking up some of those soil aggregates, pulverizing the topsoil a bit, and if you haven't got any crop emerged, if you get a windy day, today is a little bit windy, uh, you could have some drifting soil. So that's a concern. So the thought is then, okay, do I wait? Wait until they're up. Um, you don't want to roll right at emergence because when you're rolling after the crop comes up, you want to have enough stem that is flexible so that when you go over with the roller, it'll actually bend, you know, and not break off. So when the plant is first coming out of the ground, when it's really short, stubby, if you roll, you might break off the top of the plant or the growing point. So one recommendation is then to wait until about the two to three node stage so that you've got some plant up. Uh, if you're going to roll at the two to three node stage, and some recommendations actually say four to six, depending on where you're at. So depends on, on, on the jurisdiction. Some, so I guess two to six node stage, depending on where you're at. Uh, you don't want to roll in the morning. Because if, you, if you're in the morning temperatures, the plants are colder. And think about that stem being brittle. So if you were to go out and roll when it's cool in the morning, <clears throat> you've got a pretty good chance you may do damage to the stem because it's brittle. So the recommendation is to wait till afternoon. Temperatures kind of like what we've got today, where we're in the mid-20s, would be probably ideal. Because that way the plant has softened up a little bit, right? It's just kind of wilted a little bit. So when you go over it with the roller, the stem will actually bend over and not break off. Um, they do recommend, however, if you are rolling past the three node stage, get out and check. Just don't go into the field and take off and go down the field and roll the whole field. Do a little bit, get out and, and check. Am I breaking stems off? Because if you're doing more damage than good, that's maybe not the right thing to do. Maybe you need to either wait for it to warm up even warmer so that the plants are more supple, uh, or you maybe just say, is it really, what am I gaining? What am I going to lose here? Because if you do more damage than, than good, that's not, that's not what you want either. So, I mean, that's, that's no different than insect feeding damage or, or frost or anything like that because I mean that's really what you're doing is you're creating an injury to the plant to the growing point and yeah the, the plant will recover but what you've done is you've set it back um, <clears throat> and then the other thing is if you're on dry land what if we got some stressful growing conditions afterwards now the plant has to reset itself to recover from the injury so now it's taking more energy to repair the damage produce new stem and leaves and now it's been set back. So um, ideally, right, you know, within a few days of seeding would be the ideal thing, but again, you have to weigh up the risks, I guess, if you think there's gonna be a wind erosion problem. But those are sort of the, the factors they have to consider. And now if you are in that situation, and hopefully you're not, but you're maybe, you seed it into dust, you, you put your peas in and you're gonna go roll. What are, what are, is it soil erosion that's your biggest concern? And, and if so, how much soil erosion could you be you tell me, Kara, if it, the wind is going to blow. <laughs> that, that's, that's the biggest thing is, you know, um, 
are they, you know, are we going to have windy days kind of thing? If you don't, you know, and I guess that would be the other thing as well is, is given the field, how much residue cover do you have? Um, if you've done direct seeding into, um, into standing stubble and you've got decent uh, stubble cover like, you know, what we've got around here, erosion may not be so much of an issue. But if you were in an area in southern Alberta that experienced drought last year, severe drought, and you, let's say, only had a 10 bushel crop, probably didn't produce a lot of residue, and you seed it into that, there may not be a whole lot of cover. So um, I guess judging the risk of wind erosion would be based on the amount of straw cover that you've got, residue cover you've got on the field. <laughs>